Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how you can make a little system to visualize the pathing of the Unreal Engine. Um, basically we're just going to show how to create a path from the 00 location, the origin, and just project it out to where your mouse cursor is. Alright, uh, let's get started. Alright, so to begin the first thing I'm going to do is to set up a few things for testing purposes later, just so it makes it easier and better looking. Uh, first of which is I need to add a camera. And it's just going to give us a better vantage point so we can actually see what we're doing later. I'm just going to snap to object to view and set it to be used by player zero. Auto activate for player, player zero. All right. um, the other thing I want to do is to add a nav mesh. This whole system is not going to work without some kind of navigation volume. Search for nav, get nav mesh bounds volume, and let's scale it up so it covers our whole floor area. If you hit P, it should show the green showing that it's built the navigation. And that's the navigatable area. So we're actually going to be doing this whole script in the level blueprint. So let's go to blueprints, open level blueprint. And the last thing we're going to need to set up just for testing purposes and all that is we need to be able to see our mouse while we're playing. So we need to get our player controller. And we'll drag off the return value and get set show mouse cursor. Set show mouse cursor. And we'll set that to true. And we'll just do that on begin play. Alright, so if all goes well, hit compile, we hit play, we should possess that camera and show the mouse while we're playing. And yep, it's working just fine. Alright, now for the script itself, what we're going to be doing is basically getting two positions. Uh, for this example, we're going to work from the zero position, the origin, to our mouse location projected into the scene. And then we'll have to get a path between the two points, and then we'll draw the path. So to get the path, we're going to use um, find path to actor synchronous or find path to location synchronously. You could do it also with an actor. Uh, for example, you could do it from your player character to something else. Uh, for our locations, we're just going to use the path start of zero zero. For our path end, we're going to use the mouse location. So let's get the player controller again. Player controller, and we want to get the hit result under cursor. So let's get hit result under cursor by channel, and using visibility channel for this is fine because we're just going to be using the hit results of the floor. Um, we'll take our hit results and split the struct bin, so that gives us our hit result location, and we'll connect that to tick for now. Alright, and the next thing we need to do is to be able to draw the path. So to be able to draw the path, we first need the path points. So we can take off the return value of the path and say get points. And so now we just need to loop through those and draw a point, uh, draw a line from each point to the next. So we'll use a for each loop. In. All right, for our loop, I'm going to do a little simplification here and use the switch. Switch on int. Basically, we want to loop through for every single index except the first. Um, you could easily do this with a branch and a uh, basically a check to see if it's loop zero. I'm just going to cheat and do it with one node instead. You can just switch on int. If it's zero, we're going to do nothing. If it's default, which is anything other than zero, then we're going to draw a debug. And let's just use a arrow for this one. Draw a debug arrow. All right. And we need to set this duration. We'll just say 
Actually, let's get our tick, our delta time. Okay, world delta seconds. That'll be our duration. Our line color, let's go with something other than black. Uh, let's go for a pinkish color. Or purple, I guess, works. There we go, pink. Alright, and our thickness is going to be, we'll just say 5, and arrow size will do 15. If we don't like it, we can change those values later. Alright, now back to the main point here. Uh, our first location, we want to get a point. This point is going to be our start location. And the second index, the array element of the loop, will be our end location. Just tidy that up slightly. We'll take our array index since we want the one previous to it to be the start of the line. Take the index and int minus int, int minus one, and plug that into the get. And tidy it up just a little bit. Alright, and from there we should be able to test it and see if it works. We'll hit compile, go to our level, hit play. And it's not working. All right, so what I was doing wrong there was uh, doing duration of delta seconds was just being way too quick, so it wasn't showing up. Um, it was killing it basically before it could actually dry everything. Um, so I just dropped the duration down to 0 0.1, hit compile, and play. And as you can see, we get a line from zero point on the screen. That's pretty boring though, so let's put some obstacles in there just so it'll show that it's actually creating a path. All right, so to create a little actor to make some obstacles, I'm just gonna create a blueprint class, type actor. Um, it's just gonna be a temporary actor, so I don't care to name it or anything. I'm just going to go into the event graph, create a custom event. Right, custom event. I don't even need to aim it, name it. I'm just going to have it call in editor. And on this event, I'm just going to spawn a actor. Spawn actor from class. Uh, spawn location, I'm going to set randomly. Uh, we're just going to get random point in radius random point in navigatable radius origin will be actual location and spawn actual location and the radius I'm just going to set it to a thousand right. for my actor I'm just going to set it to a cube actor that I created Hit compile, and oh, I actually want to do a loop of this, so I can do it many times. So do a for loop, and each time I run this, I'm just going to run it ten times. So zero to nine. All right. So every time I run this event, it's going to create nine cube actors in a random location. So I'll just put them level. And over here under default, I can run custom event zero, and it creates a bunch of little things. I'm also going to scale this up just so we have more room to play with. And I'll scale up the nav mesh as well. All right. Now I can create my new blueprint actor and just move it around, do it again. And again. And again. All right, now that we have some uh, things to work around to create paths around, let's try it once again. We'll hit play, and my my path is stuck under some blocks, <laughs> so I'll just need to move those out of the way. Or better yet, I'll just delete those ones. All right, we get rid of the ones right at the center of the map. All right, there we go. Now you can see that the line is bending around things. And that's our pathing. You can clearly see where the arrowheads are. That's where all of the path points are. 
If we can get, uh, you can create some pretty complex things like this. It can obviously navigate quite a ways. Um, yeah, that's basically it. You could use this system, you know, for all kinds of like point and click movement or for very basic systems. Um, it's probably better ways of doing things though. Uh, as you know, debug, like drawing debug arrows and lines, it won't show in your actual game. Um, yeah, just something cool to play with and nice way to visualize doing navigation. Thanks.